It's time now for some real education. Max Beckmann's 1917 Cubist painting, Descent from the Cross, offers an unflinching look at bodily suffering, a timely topic for a painting made during the bloody years of World War I. The image can be witnessed through multiple perspectives that draw focus to Jesus' oversized corpse, his pale flesh covered in bruises and sores, and the coagulated blood pooling around the holes of stigmata. His outstretched arms in their rigor mortis mirror the shape of the cross. Beckmann possibly painted this picture to answer a challenge posed by Gustav Hartmann to create a modern work of art as powerful as those from medieval German art. And this, pic this picture was actually recommended to us by one of our viewers, uh, uh, somebody who's all, who, who likes to recommend things. We uh, encourage you to keep doing this. This is Alexander Kelly of Concord, North Carolina. So we want to thank you for recommending this. And anybody out there in the listening land of the, doc of the vast and diverse Dr. Duke Show audience, if you'd like us to consider doing something for Instant Classic, just send us a note. And we thank again Alexander Kelly. And so we have this image here, The Descent of the Cross. And it is really a, a remarkable image. And if you, if you look at it, and we've done a number of images like this from the World War I period. We've already done a couple of poems and a couple of pictures from this area. Most notably, we have recently talked about Mark Chagall's paintings of crucifixes. Chagall, of course, was an exiled Jew from Russia. Here you have a situation where you have Max Beckmann. Uh, right, right about the time, 1916-1970, the World, World War I was wrapping down the bloodiest conflict, I, I think still, in the history of the world, World War I, the most brutal kind of warfare. It was the, the beginning of the technological age of warfare. Tanks had been invented. Mustard gas was being used. Machine guns had been invented. And so many of the artists of that, of that time, whether they were uh, Russian or in this case German, had the same thing in their minds. Just how bloody and how, how brutal the modern world had become. And if you go back and take a look at the picture again, why wouldn't Jesus be the perfect image of that? Now again, this is a distorted cubist. It's, it's, a, it's a, a painting that is Cubist, but not full onset cubism, if I may phrase it that way. But if you take a look at the body of Christ there, in some ways, the body of Christ represents uh, the medieval um, skeleton, the grim reaper. You can see here uh, that it's almost as if uh, the body of Christ is morphed into what the Middle Ages would use as that skeletal figure with the scythe that would go around mowing people down. Christ has become not just a savior, and it, does, it begs the question. Notice that he's been taken down from the cross, but that his arms are still spread out as if he were on the cross. And, and one of the points that I think Beckman is beginning to make here in, in the kind of godlessness that gave us World War one. Remember, um, you had uh, headlines in the newspapers that God is dead right at the beginning of this war, that God is dead, war, the world is at war. And you think about the, the random carnage, the, the incredible horrors of trench warfare, the kind of dying that took place. And almost an entire generation of young men in Europe had been eradicated by this war. And if you go back to the image, you look at it again, this is a, a, a picture of, this, this Christ could be picked not just off the cross, he could be picked up from uh, a bunker or a trench. This is a Christ who, it, within, for World War II, as we lumbered on towards that, this is a Christ that could be removed from a concentration camp. This is a Christ who represents the horrors of what people do to other people. And if you look, this is an odd descent, right? If you think about the great descent of the cross, is, well, perhaps the most beautiful one ever done was Peter Paul Rubin's descent from the cross, maybe his masterpiece. You think about what, how that culture 300 years earlier figured the act of taking Christ from the cross, and you look at how he's been taken down here. Another interesting point about the picture, it's as if rigor mortis has set in. Uh, the, the, in other words, Christ is frozen physically in the, the, the way that he was brutalized and, and crucified. This is not a painting that is meant to suggest that this Christ will get up and fix these problems. This is in many ways uh, a capitulatory picture of Christ, that we've got all the suffering and, and it, no doubt that Christ, who suffered perhaps more than anybody who ever lived, that that suffering here is reified in what's taking place in the war. And so really interesting pictures. And so uh, Alexander Kelly of Concord, North Carolina, I hope we in four and a half minutes did a little bit of justice to that. I'll keep recommending pictures. Everybody else, send us your ideas for Instant Classic as well.